Hello, you're tuned in to The Wire. In the last six to seven days, a stream of good news on the COVID-19 vaccine front has been coming in. Many leading vaccine candidates for COVID-19 have shown promising results. On Monday, there was news from Oxford University and British pharma giant AstraZeneca's joint vaccine candidate. On Tuesday, China's CanSino and Germany's Pfizer BioNTech published the results of its early trials. And last week, U.S. biotech firm Moderna's experimental vaccine showed promising results. In this episode of Daily Updates on the coronavirus pandemic, we will look into the preliminary results of these vaccine candidates in detail. On the 20th of July, Oxford University researchers published the results of its early-stage human trials. This means that the results are from Phase 1 and Phase 2 human trials. The vaccine candidate is currently undergoing Phase 3 trials. The early-stage results of this vaccine show that it triggered immune response in humans. Over a 1,000 people who were administered with shots of this vaccine developed antibodies and T-cells that can fight the coronavirus. Antibodies are basically proteins produced in plasma cells and are used by the immune system to fight a pathogen. T-cells or T-lymphocytes are a form of blood cells produced by the thymus gland, which is situated right between our lungs, and these white blood cells actively participate in immune response to pathogens. This immune response is called cellular immunity. The Oxford vaccine candidate has generated both antibodies and T-cells in humans. According to the results of phase 2 trials, the level of neutralizing antibodies increased after two doses of the vaccine. And the vaccine candidate also showed a quote-unquote marked increase in the response generated by cellular immunity. But how safe is the vaccine? And were there any side effects? According to the results, there are no dangerous side effects of the vaccine, but 70% of those who were given the shots did complain of fever or headache. The researchers have said that these can be managed by doses of paracetamol. In the next steps of the study, or in phase 3 trials, more than 10,000 people will take part. The trial will also be expanded to other countries like the United States, South Africa and Brazil. According to a BBC report, the Phase 3 trial, which is supposed to be the largest and the most definitive, will be expanded to other countries because the level of coronavirus are low in the United Kingdom and it is hard to know if the vaccine is really effective or not. Last week, US biotech firm Moderna released the results of its experimental vaccines trial. The results showed that it provoked an immune response in humans too. The results were also of an early stage study, which was done on 45 volunteers. Moderna vaccines trials are being run by the US government's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. This vaccine works slightly different from the earlier one. It is based on a different technology called the ribo nucleic acid technology, but it showed similar abilities to induce neutralizing antibodies as well as some T-cells. The testing for these neutralizing antibodies, however, has only taken place on first 8 out of 45 people on the trial. No volunteers experienced a side effect in this case, but more than half of the total volunteers reported mild or moderate reactions, such as fatigue, headache, chills, muscle ache or pain at the injection site. These side effects, according to the study, were more likely to occur after the second dose and in people who got the highest dose of the vaccine. It will, however, take larger trials to see if people are protected against the virus. Moderna is expected to begin its phase 3 trials on the 27th of July, which will be conducted in over 30,000 volunteers. Other than Moderna and Oxford AstraZeneca, there are over 150 vaccine candidates which are currently under trial. Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine is one. It uses technologies which is similar to the Moderna vaccine, the RNA technology, and it also showed positive results on Tuesday. It is being developed by a German biotech firm, and the vaccine's mid-stage trials have shown that it induced an immune response in 60 people. The company said that their data shows that high-level T-cells and neutralizing antibodies were generated in this case as well. A paper of the study is currently undergoing peer review. On the same day, on Tuesday, the results of a Chinese company, CanSino Biologics vaccine candidates, phase 2 trials were also published in The Lancet. The Lancet is a well-known, reputed medical journal. 
CanSino's vaccine candidate was tested on 508 volunteers and it uses the same method that's used by Oxford AstraZeneca. CanSino's vaccine has also been successful in producing antibody and T-cell immune responses and has not prompted any serious side effects either. Naur Barziev and William Moss from the International Vaccine Access Center at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health have said that both CanSino and Oxford AstraZeneca are good enough to get into large phase 3 trials where the vaccines will be tested on thousands of subjects to assess their efficacy. They added that the overall results of both trials are broadly similar and promising. But the CanSino vaccine has a limitation. Chinese researchers in an earlier peer-reviewed paper noted that immune responses generated by the vaccine might be undermined if the person who has been administered the vaccine has already developed high-level immunity to common viruses from previous infections. Authors said that increasing age and high pre-existing adenovirus immunity or immunity to common viruses significantly reduced immune response to the CanSino vaccine. Well, despite all these nuances of vaccine development, we have a lot of good news and much more to look forward to. Thank you for tuning in. Keep reading and watching The Wire and The Wire Science. Hope this was useful for you. Until then, stay safe.